Yeah. Now we straighten up. Okay. Oh, okay. serious. Joining the table, former uh, governor of Minnesota and Republican candidate for president Tim Pawlenty. Very you don't have good to, straighten to have up you on back. My behalf. Oh well, I, they've been kind of off the rails this morning. So bring trust them back. me. Yeah, trust me. You want to you want to go with this, uh, Michelle Bachman. Uh, she's been pulling it together, and a lot of people are talking about her, and she's doing well in certain polls. What do you make of her uh, candidacy, and how does that affect yours? Well, I know Congresswoman Bachman. I've campaigned for her. I've uh, respected her over the years and have worked with her over the years. She's from Minnesota, obviously, but everybody brings something different to the table. One of the things I bring to the table is a record of executive leadership and results. So not just talking about these issues, but actually getting them done on taxes, on spending, on market-based health care reform, public employee pension reform, and much more. And I think that's one of the things people are going to be interested in. Have you actually done these things, not just talked about them? You know, oh, go ahead, Joe. No, no, go ahead. No. Well, I was just talking about what's happening in Washington. And wondering President Obama has stepped into the deficit talks, uh, meeting separately with Senate leaders Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell at the White House yesterday to try and offset uh, a federal debt increase. How do you think the president is handling this issue? Well, we don't know yet, Mika. The real test is coming up as the deadline approaches. But right now, as judged by outcomes, the answer is he hasn't done anything yet. So this debt ceiling issue is going to be a fork in the road. From my view is the Republicans uh, shouldn't raise it. But if they do raise it, they need to get something permanent and structural and meaningful, like a constitutional amendment, real spending caps, and some changes in the spending in the near term. What's, it, what's the impact if it's not raised? Well, we don't know that. So well, we've never we had can, this we situation. can make an educated guess. Like, I don't know what's going to happen to me if I jump off a cliff. Well, I'll, okay. tell, you what, I'll tell you what one flat. smart person said, Joe. I mean, the, the once, you know, we don't know. We haven't been here before. But Stan right. Druckenmuller, for example, mm -hmm. says, you know what? At least if it were uh, contained to a short amount of time, he says the markets might actually like the fact that they're forcing the issue to resolve something on the spending side. Right. But the answer is nobody really knows for sure. And anybody who says they know, they don't. But what about, uh, let, let's talk about bringing more tax revenue into the federal government. Because you know, as you said, you've done things. You haven't just talked about doing things like some members of Congress. I love talking about doing things. And then going off with Willie and having a smoke. Uh, but you've actually done things as governor. You know, getting things done, especially in a state like Minnesota, requires... That's when smoke was a smoke and grooving was grooving. It, it, see, exactly. Yes. That's yeah. right. It still is, my man. I don't know what era you're in. In Joe's mind. So you want to raise revenues, Joe? No, I don't. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm not talking about raising revenues. You knew, though, that you had to do a deal with the other side. We had Chris Christie on yesterday saying, you know, to do what I did in New Jersey, I had to do a lot of things that I hated. Mm. So what, what do the Republicans do if, if the Democrats are willing to move on entitlement spending, if they're willing to move on domestic discretionary spending, what do the Republicans give up? What makes the Republicans hurt? I don't think this is a question of what do the Republicans need or what do the Democrats need. I think it's a question of what does the country need. And setting aside the nonsense or, frankly, the BS on both sides, just look at it as a matter of sixth grade math, Joe. Right. You can look at the spending. You can look at the revenues. They don't ever catch up. And within 10 years, this thing implodes financially. Right. So this isn't about Republican or Democrat. It's about what does America need. And a sixth grader can look at the charts and determine for you that we need to slow down spending. Right. And the revenues are projected to grow at least as fast as the economy. So, so what the so, Democrats so are slow, saying slow is slow government should grow faster than the economy. Slow down entitlement spending, right? Fix it and slow it down. Cut, cut defense spending, right? Uh, no. Oh, come on. Slow down the increase in defense spending, reprioritize, refocus it. But if you look at defense spending, by the way, if you look at the war supplementals and right. you take down Iraq or Afghanistan or significant parts of it, right. that will reduce the overall spend on defense. But if mm -hmm. you look at the base budget in spending, I agreed with Secretary Gates in his first version before the president pressured him to cut further. Slow down the rate of increase, reprioritize within defense, but don't cut it off the base budget. We're spending more money. And it, uh, you know, I, you can look back at my record in Congress. I was. Do I have to. Uh, you, you, you probably, if you, if you want conservative voters, you probably want to emulate it. Uh, <laughs> but when it came to to military issues, I was the hawk's hawk. I had five military bases in my district, and I'm still consider myself a hawk. But a Reagan type of hawk, a Cap Weinberger type of hawk, a Colin Powell type of hawk, where we're not extending ourselves all over the globe. We're very narrow and focused. And we've lost that over the past decade, haven't we? We're in the middle of three hot wars. We've tripled the number of troops in Afghanistan. We really don't know what our mission is in Libya. We've got a president that says we, we, we need to get rid of Gaddafi, but we're not going to try to change the regime. 
what do we do moving forward? Well, I'm going to give a speech in the Council on Foreign Relations in about two hours on these very topics with a focus on the Middle East and a couple of things that you mentioned. One is we do now have a mission in Libya, and that is once the President of the United States says Gaddafi must go, you can't have some third-rate dictator thumbing his nose indefinitely at the United States of America. He needs to now Well, that, that, that's what He's the President said it, but before the President said we're not, this isn't about regime change. He's created the vital interest in part. I had to, uh, called for action earlier, but once the President of the United States says Gaddafi must go, the President's own words now create the outcome. He created the second vital interest. There, there, there's, there's the necessity, but if you have a commander-in-chief that is now saying we're not going after regime change, doesn't that muddle things up a bit? My view is he should not subordinate our decision-making and our options to the United Nations resolution. When the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, and the leader of the free world says Gaddafi must go, you can't have a third-rate dictator go. sit there indefinitely and basically uh, thumb his nose. Okay, what about Afghanistan? World. Well, Afghanistan, you know, I was there last uh, summer, talked to General Petraeus. He said, look, at that time we had stalled the momentum of the insurgency. He needed about two more years to get the quality and the volume of the Afghan security forces to a point where they could step up as we phase the drawdown. Two more years from last summer. Since then, he said publicly he thought he could do it a little sooner. In the meantime, again, the president intervenes on a political timetable against Petraeus' initial recommendation. He's being diplomatic publicly. And the president says, no, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to take down 33,000 troops over the next year and a half. And coincidentally, it's timed uh, very suspiciously correlated to the election. Really? Against General Petraeus' view on this? I'm not saying we have to stay in Afghanistan forever or nation build over the next 10 or 20 years, but the next increment of progress and hope for our mission there was to build up those security forces in volume. But we, but we are nation building. We need, and conservatives, uh, when, when Bill Clinton was president, conservatives were against nation building. Over the past decade, Republicans... Joe, no, that's engaged. not, that's no, not that my is. definition of the mission in Afghanistan. My definition in, the, in you, Afghanistan is this. Have enough capacity in the Afghanistan or nearby so that threats to our security interests can be promptly identified and defeated if the need arises. And in the intermediate term, that means and only means building up the Afghan security forces so they can draw up as we draw down. That To do it properly was going to take more than another 6 or 12 months. I, I, I'll pass the it, president I'll pass cut it to it Mike. Short. The problem On a is, though, agenda. we don't have Thomas Jefferson running Afghanistan. We have Karzai That's right. and his, 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 his drug addict brother. Are we not building our foundation on shaky sand here, on sinking sand? The goal is not to nation build in Afghanistan. The goal is not to say we're going to have a Western-style democracy run by Karzai and Kabul. That is not our goal. The goal is to have, like I said, enough capacity in or near Afghanistan to promptly identify and de defeat threats as they arise. And we're not quite there yet. Petraeus asked for a little more time. The most respected, most informed, most knowledgeable, most successful leader on these issues, and the president cut him short. Uh, this is a moment of opportunity for us in the region more broadly, and I think he put out a political timeline instead of what was right for our security interests. Hmm. Uh, you realize that General Petraeus and everyone else at the Pentagon, that despite the quality of what they do, despite how admirable they are in terms of human beings and their military intellect,